How you guys doing? This is Jason, back with Tuna Tech. And I gotta have you contemplate, do we need gaming phones? All right, so I've had the Red Magic 8 here Pro uh, about a week and a half, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts and whether or not you should buy it or you should not. Now, with that being said, this is a, I call it a half review. I don't do benchmarks. I don't do um, a bunch of videos and pictures. I bought this phone to play games on and do some basic stuff. I will post some pictures that I took, uh, let you guys know what it's about. So I'm gonna take the little case off that it came with so you guys have a little better idea of what it's gonna look like. This is the matte version. This is 12 gig. Uh, 256. This is called Matt, M A T T E. Uh, starts at 649, which is a pretty good deal for what you're getting in the package. They do have a bigger version that's the Void. It's 16 gig, 512 gigabytes. At the time of this writing on their website, or this video, I should say, it did look like it was still in pre order status. So I'm not sure if it's back in stock or not. So let's start from the top. So you can see here it's got a 6.8 inch. Full HD, 120 hertz AMOLED screen. So, is it good? Yes. And as you can see, the fingerprint screen reader, fingerprint reader is pretty quick. There is a camera right here. Um, it's under the screen, and it does um, okay. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, but the screen is quick. It's fluid. It moves around. Um, gaming is is fantastic. You can see. Uh, obviously, here you're looking at the skin here. It's a little unique, but the screen is fantastic. Things. Are smooth they they swipe up and down a couple issues I had with this phone when I first got it it is running Android 13 uh, it's their version of uh, it is red magic OS 6.0 uh, I did get one update I think it put the security update at January so as you can see it's a couple months behind but uh, I didn't see much change but when I first got it all the apps were on the page here and I couldn't figure out when you know when you hold something you can you know remove it but I couldn't so it defaults to having all your apps on the screen and not having an app drawer so keep that in mind if you buy this phone and you want to have the typical Android app drawer you're gonna have to go into settings um, and change that so you keep that in mind so the, the, the screen is beautiful it, 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 it it's vibrant it's not uh, interrupted by a selfie camera which is under the screen and I'm just gonna go around the bat and say this before we get to the cameras that front facing camera is not good I'm not even gonna show you pictures it's under the screen so um, let me see if I can pull it up here yeah, you can't even see the screen here but as you can see it's kind of hazy it doesn't it's not perfect what no camera is perfect but this being under the screen it's their version 2 I think they said um, but honestly I don't see it being a, a, a main feature. Uh, it's there, so you can use it. But the main thing is this, this whole screen is uninterrupted, so playing games on this is fantastic. Uh, it's got a cooling system, so there's a couple things you need to know. So when you, when you turn this on, this is the gaming switch right here, this little red button, you hit it. And you hear the sound, it goes in the red magic. Now, I'm not obviously on the Wi-Fi right now but you can see these games here and I'll maybe I'll jump on to show you how it plays so when you start a game let me turn off the airplane mode here and let's just open we'll open World War Heroes here and you see here start game now going to the heating this is a cooling system it's got a fan you got a, a, a little duct here and a duct here. It is a fan inside. You can't see it in this version. This is the matte black version, but it does spin to keep it cool. It also supposedly has um, the fan spins at 20,000 RPM. It's got the cooling duct, like I just said, but it's got aircraft grade aluminum alloys, super soft, high heat conductivity, rare earth graphene out of the screen, super thermal conductivity, copper foil, and high thermal conductivity gel. What's that mean? It keeps it cool. But this, this the processor in here, that 8 Gen 2 from Qualcomm, Snapdragon, is pretty efficient already um, but here's what I'll show you and it's a little a little different here um, let me get through here you you slide over to the side here if I can find it here I did. oh nope 
there is a little there so you got this little dashboard here and you can change right now i'm into something called diablo mode this is not something standard you click on here and you got eco balance and rise rise is the highest you can go on a typical phone um, i'll show you there's a little shortcut you can get diablo mode so it kind of tells you look this is what the gigahertz of your cpu is and your gpu um, and this is on rise and then if you go to diablo which is not here anymore uh, it makes everything full speed so it does get a little hotter there but in here you could talk you can you can toggle your fan on and off all kinds of stuff and it see and you see a little spinner in here it tells you that the fan's on and i don't know if you can hear this that is the fan spinning so you know going back to some of this gaming you just hit battle it does get warm to the touch does it get as hot as a lot of phones before but that 8 gen 2 is pretty efficient and it seems to get, it seems to do pretty well under under uh, a lot of pressure but you see how how smooth the screen is here you know you can run around just kind of showing you guys a little bit i'm not going to sit here and play but you know you can switch your guns and this is a game i like to play it's called world war heroes um, but you know you run around and you get to adjust here um, and then to get out of the game mad mode you just click it here and it takes you back to the home screen so it does get warm to the touch when you're playing another th way it gets uh warm to the touches so you got this USB-C here at the bottom it is video out as well so if you hook it up to a um a dock that has hdmi out or a, a display out you can hook it up to a bigger screen and i'll try to post some pictures in here i did this with a, a little computer monitor and i mapped the buttons to a keyboard and a mouse and i was playing with a mouse and keyboard on a bigger screen it was amazing it's really neat but in that mode it uses the speakers on the phone and you kind of tuck it away it got super warm but i didn't see any like delays in in the uh game or any any kind of bogging down or any frame rate skips so it does get a little warm but i think with what it can do it's understandable Going back to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, this thing is a beast. It runs everything, no matter what you do, and it has killer battery life. So as of right now, you see 68%. It's been off the charger for probably about a day. Um, I don't use it all the time. I've got a lot of phones, but I did a test where I, I used it as my primary phone for a couple days. And on the third day, when I woke up probably around seven in the morning, it was at 13%. So two days, two and a half days of usage, 13%. That is awesome. Now, I can you can attribute that to some of Red Magic's uh, optimizations, but it's mainly that, that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So any phone that has this chipset should be better off at, uh, you know, better battery life and performance. But the, the battery is a 6,000 milliamp, it does 65 watt charging so I, when i did have this down 11 percent, i plugged in the charger i would again i'm not going to go through numbers and, and and time at all but plugging this this phone into the charger that came in the box it's a 65 watt gan charger it went in about a half an hour it went from 11 percent to like 82 percent. so i would say it's pretty quick it's at the fastest out there and there is no wireless charging so keep that in mind but flip side of this is you know, it is a gaming phone first and foremost. So I don't know how many people are going to be using this as a, a main phone or, and if they do, should they? The fingerprint sensor, like you said, we showed you right here. It's right here in the screen and it works pretty good. And you can change those animations. Um, it's got the output for HDMI, which is pretty cool. It does have a console mode. So when you plug it into a TV, it looks like you're playing like a video game system. It's not, it doesn't look fantastic, but it, it works. Going back to the cameras, the front facing camera is not, I'm gonna say it, and I don't wanna, I'm not trying to talk bad about Red Magic, but it's trash. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna be anything you're gonna to wanna to use. On the back, this is where they made some changes to the phone. So they have a triple camera setup. I wish they would have just two cameras. So they have a main sensor that's 50 megapixels. That's the Samsung GN5. And I'll be honest, I'm gonna post some pictures here so you guys see what they are. The camera's decent. It does, the night mode works. Uh, it's 
regular shots are good. Uh, again, if you're going to have fast motion at night, it's going to be blurred. Um, it's no Samsung or Google or Apple killer, but it's for a gaming phone. The 50 megapixel camera is definitely a, a welcome addition. The other one is an 8 megapixel ultra wide, which again, I'm going to be say it, it's not good. It's I think they just shoved it in there to have a wide angle. I wish it had been better off if they were to throw maybe a 16 megapixel in there and, you know, tuned it a little bit more. And then the third one's a 2 megapixel macro. I didn't even use it. I don't like when phones do this, when they add another sensor just to have another sensor. I would have rather them had a higher ultra wide and doubled that as a macro and you would have got better shots. So is this a camera centric phone? Absolutely not. If you're buying this for the cameras, look elsewhere. But yeah, so that's that. This is, again, this is the 12 gig version. It's got 256 gigs of RAM. It is US, UFS 4.1 and it's LPDDR5X. So it's super, super quick. All this stuff, you guys, is makes this thing a gaming beast. Um, but here are some things that I don't like about this phone. The software, like I said, still leaves a lot to be desired. Um, it's, it's Android 13, but there's just some things about it that I just don't really like. Um, and you have to get kind of used to it, you know, like your home screen, you, you can't, so you see this, but it doesn't show you anything like that you have any, you know, it'll light up. So you show you that you have notifications, but they don't actually show it. So once you get into it, you know, you unlock it with your fingerprint and then you slide down and then everything is like hidden. You got to like pull things down every single time you want to see something. So I don't know if that's something I'm a big fan of, but either way, that's how they do it. So the software is the biggest issue with this phone. Uh, it, it, it works, but here's what people need to know. Nubia, the company that makes Red Magic, came out and said they will do two, one to two years of security updates. They can't even be upfront about that. And only one OS update. So this is on 13 now. You're gonna get you're gonna get 15, or I'm sorry, uh, Android 14, and that's it. Um, and it seems like their update it's like every two to three months they're gonna give you an update. So your security patches are always gonna be outdated. So like I'm on January now. Well, in two to three months, I'll probably be on March or April, and it'll be June. You know, so they're not gonna be supported for long. So. Is this phone really worth it? The screen's great, the speakers are loud, the build quality's fantastic. I mean, it's it's a tank. I mean, it's hard. It's The, the edges are, are, you know, sharp. It looks good. It's got a lot of power. It does everything any modern phone would do. It's got decent cameras, um, fantastic speed. I mean, multiple day battery life. Uh, Bluetooth 5.3, it supports Wi-Fi 7, if you have it. Um, network speeds are great. It does have NFC, uh, and I had some difficulty with Apple, I'm sorry, Google Pay not working, the tap to pay. I'm not sure if that's something that can be changed in a security update. But at the time of this video, it did not work for me. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's definitely a gaming phone, and as you can see, you have these little soft triggers here, so when you're in the gaming mode, you can... Uh, map multiple buttons top two um, but you could always buy something like this too you know this these things that go around your system here um, this is the Razer Kashi I think it's called uh, and you can put the phone inside this and use this you know use the controllers or you can you know link it with a Bluetooth uh, controller like the Stadia dead Stadia controllers if you did the update you can now use that with this phone so is gaming phone important Buying this phone for $649 is a steal of a deal. It's got everything a modern phone has plus more, but it lacks in software. So if you're willing to live with a phone for two to three years, knowing you're only going to get one OS update and maybe a year or two of security updates, I would say buy this. If you're looking for a phone that's well-rounded in everything, like pictures, videos, everything like that, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you're a gaming first phone user, definitely definitely buy this phone one last thing in the box it comes with a case and you can see this case has top protection and bottom protection but nothing on the side and i looked online again you're not going to have a wide variety of different kinds of uh, cases and the reason why there's no side protection is because you've got a fan outlet and you got trigger buttons and this button over here and on the other side 
same thing, you got another fan. So it's easier for them just to make a case that doesn't have the sides. So uh, it comes in the case, it's a good addition. Um, but for $649, if you're gamer first and you're okay with mediocre cameras and software, jump all over this. If you want something a little more polished, at this price range, at $649, your next best, best phone at this price, is, around this price, is going to be the OnePlus 11, which I have coming in. It starts at $699. That's probably going to have a little better polish on the software and a little more, and probably better. I'm, I'm not probably. It's going to have better cameras. Um, but it won't have the, the unique styling of this phone. It won't have the gamer switch with uh, the Rise um, mode. And speaking of that, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So if you are interested in learning how to put this phone, you buy it and you want to put it in Rise, which will max out GPU and CPU speeds when you're playing games, download, it's called Activity Launcher from the Google Play Store. You click on that. And it'll open some stuff here, and then you're going to type in the search engine once it gets rolled in here. Let me, I've already done this, but I'm just going to tell you how to do it. So you go to search, and you type in chicken, okay? Search, and you type in <coughs> chicken, and you'll see this little thing here. You click on that, or you can hit the three mark and create shortcut, which I did already. It's right here. And when you click on this, it opens a secret menu. It says Diablo mode. It says, no, power consumption and heating will increase significantly. But when you click this, it says, after turning on, the power consumption and heating are greatly increased. When turned on, Red Magic time and manual recording will be closed. You hit confirm, and it turns it on. And that way, when you go into that gaming mode, you'll see Rise picked. And we'll show, I'll show you right now. Um, we'll go into the gamer mode here. And we'll... Turn off the airplane mode here real quick. We will open Heroes again. And of course it flips me around here. And it says here, turn it off. It even gives you a little prompt. Do you want to turn Rise off? And I just click it off because I want to keep it on. And we'll swipe in from the side. And you'll see Diablo mode. And you'll see the, GP, the, the GPU and CPU. And those are the max clocks for, for this processor. So there you have it. It's a gaming first phone. The biggest selling point for this is the fact that it's got a gaming mode and that you can plug this into a TV, keyboard, mouse, map everything. And I, that World War Heroes is a, it's a you know, first person shooter. And I've got WASD on my keyboard and I use my mouse and I can aim and shoot. And that's what I like to do. I'm not good with these kind of controllers. So I rather use the keyboard and mouse and it works. So that's pretty cool. Um, so if you're going to use a phone for a year or two, and that's it, and you're okay with decent, you know, mediocre cameras, this is a great phone. Um, but there's a lot of options out there, so uh, check back with this channel. I'll have an unboxing of the OnePlus 11, and I'll have my, my weekly review on that as well. So this is the Red Magic 8 Pro 12GB, 256, matte version, 649 on their website. If you're going to buy it, be aware of the software limitations. Thanks for watching.